Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox and thanks for logging on. Everything you see here, as usual, is for sale. As we wake up with watches, reach out to me directly, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. Names, references, and prices where available are in the description, but you just might see your watch on this show because we are buying watches. If you'd like to sell a watch, we are now offering the best prices since Watchbox was founded three years ago. We are in an acquisition mode. As ever, if you're looking to sell a watch, reach out to me directly, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. Let's start with a big piece. Okay, truth be told, this is a discreetly sized piece. The Ulysse Narda, the Petition Minute et Mal Grand Faux, a timepiece, two hands, no date, enamel dial, 38.5 millimeter rose gold handcrafted case, and it is a minute repeater. The watch on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist is close to perfect. This is a monster complication for him or for her. At 38.5, any wrist can accommodate it, and it's unusually tasteful and well-balanced for a Ulysse Nordant high complication. Get close to the case and you can see why. Handsome, curved, faceted, with fluting on the lugs, which as you can see are welded on with evidence of the welded joint removed. This is traditional handmade case construction, hand finished externally, with a grand faux enamel dial constructed on a solid gold dial base with radially arrayed Roman numerals, including a watchmaker's four. The movement, Ulysse Nordin Caliber 71, was created via a short-lived marriage between Renaud Papi and Christophe Claret in the late 1980s, and that's where this 18K beat 48 hour power reserve manual wind minute repeater movement comes from you can see black polish on the swan's neck the screw heads the click spring even the strikers for the minute repeater there are interior angles there is mile wide unglage and it sounds as good as it looks i'm going to do my best to corral 1259 as i often do this timepiece is an absolute pleasure this is a timepiece for those who are minimalists i rarely say that of any ulysse nardin watch but this timepiece takes the cake for the most minimal presentation with the most extravagant complication One of the rarest modern Ulysse Nardin pieces. Production, assuredly, amounted to dozens, not hundreds. Sticking with the good stuff, we bring in a living legend, Alango Unzona and the Datagraph Flyback. The original 39mm in red gold, this model was built from the mid-2000s through 2011, and it features the classical, no power reserve, balanced Datagraph dial. You have your pusher adjuster for the panorama datum, which feels as crisp as a fine column wheel chronograph, which, by the way, this also is. Now, the timepiece is, first and foremost, a flyback chronograph, which means reset, restart with one push of the trigger, and the feel, and by the way, Note, a loomed dial made of solid sterling silver. The feel of this chronograph is unlike any other. It's not just positive and crisp. There's the feeling that the pusher almost sucks itself in the last millimeter of travel. You can see the lateral clutch fully jeweled with multiple interior angles. That's just on the clutch with a black polished crenellated column wheel, steel components all beveled with satin tops, both fired blue and black polished screws, fired blue for physical assembly and fixtures, black polished for adjustment of the mechanism, a giant balance beaten away to lazy 18K, overcoil hairspring, five position adjustment, German silver bridges, that lovely golden tone thanks to the copper content, a special watch, a famous watch, the timepiece that caused a Lango Unzona to take off when it launched as a platinum model in 1999 and which forced Patek Philippe to take more seriously its in-house finish and movement architectures as Langa, for the first time, was setting the pace from Germany rather than Patek from Geneva. But Patek does a great job of raising its game, and this was probably the star of the 2018 Patek Philippe models. 41 millimeters in platinum with the diamond between the lugs. This is the 5270P, the first platinum 5270 salmon dial with blackened 
Arabic numerals, indices, and leaf hands in white gold. Of course, you've got a minimalist and well-integrated tachymeter outboard. And then you have a case that is surprisingly ornate and intricate. Patek case making started relatively modest with rare stepped out or welded lug profiles back in 1981. Over the years, Patek has begun to tackle fluted case bands, fluted lugs, stepped and faceted lugs, and of course, welded lug construction rather than cases that are stamped as a unit. This is impressive construction externally and all handmade. With an aperture style P Patek Philippe perpetual calendar, you see the day, you see the month, you see the leap year phase. There's a coaxial indicator for the moon phase and the date, and then you've got an AM, PM, so you know when not to use those pusher adjusters to change the calendar. Perpetual calendar that need not be adjusted until the year 2100, and on the case back, we have the nicely sized and immaculately finished rhodium plated brass of the caliber 29535 Petit Second. Now you can see the lateral clutch in action here. A different look from the Longa, but each one masterful in the tradition of its own locale and home city. You can see the black polished capped column wheel and the steel lateral clutch. You can see the Paul and the Paul wheel for the instantaneous minute jumper. We have a free sprung gyro max balance beaten away at 28.8, six position adjusted, and the watch does feature hacking seconds. It is a modern Patek caliber, 65 hour manual wind power reserve, and the watch on the wrist at about 49 millimeters lug to lug is big. It's on the sporty side of the dressy to sporty dress watch continuity. It's still a dress watch, which means 30 meters water resistant, but being sports casual, you can wear this just about anywhere but in the pool. Pool side is fine, but for wet and wild, you've got your Nautilus or your Aquanaut, right? Of course you do. But just in case you don't, Let's stay high horology and switch to the sporty side of the sports watch spectrum. Back in 2016, Vacheron launched the Generation 3 overseas. Back in 2018, it launched the model you see right here. 42.5 millimeters in stainless steel with an inverse panda dial comprised of metallic recesses and a black lacquered base. This is the Overseas Chronograph 3, third generation in-house caliber. 42.5 millimeters in steel, it's actually not that thick. It wears well, it's nothing like a 42 millimeter offshore in terms of fit. 14 centimeters circumference, you should still be able to fit this watch on your wrist. My wrist 16 wears it well and comfortably. Let's take a quick look at one of the standout features of this watch, which is the quick release bracelet system. I don't have nearly the nail that I used to, but there is a pull tab system that allows you to relatively easily and quickly remove the bracelet or the two straps. You get two straps in black with this watch, one leather, one rubber, and a second deployment clasp if you do want to remove the bracelet and fit the straps. Now the watch of course gives you everything the Overseas 2 did in terms of durability. 150 meters water resistant, 25,000 ampere per meter anti-magnetic, but that's done with a paramagnetic ring around the movement. You get the first open display case back and the first in-house caliber in an Overseas Chrono. Caliber 5200, vertical clutch column wheel, 52 hour power reserve, one, two, three, four types of finish on this rotor, which is 22 karat gold for the best winding efficiency, not 21, not not 18, certainly not tungsten. You can see Vacheron using a column wheel, but putting a black polished Maltese cross logo in the center of the crenellated wheel. Beautiful stuff. This is high horology in a sports watch with the entire case hand faceted, satinated and polished. And the same can be said of the bracelet, which is not just the best finished bracelet among the AP Patek and Vacheron trifecta. This is also the best period with the quick release system with every individual link on both sides removable by screw so you can size precisely. And as you can see, each side of the clasp features a 1.5 millimeter micro adjustment system so you are gonna get the right fit with your Overseas 3. What a watch, and many have said this is the best version. It's certainly the most charismatic even if I am slightly partial to the rarely seen brown. Sticking with our sports watch theme for summer 2020, but the beast from the east in this case, this is no Swiss watch and it's better for it. Redolent of brand character and distinctive engineering, this is the Grand Seiko Spring Drive Diver. SBGA 231 in grade five titanium. You can see it features that signature black polished tin plate Zeratsu hand finishing, whereby the case is held against a milling wheel manually and black polished. Titanium bracelet 
absolutely feather-like on the wrist, though it is a 44.2. It wears more like a 42. First, because of the shape of the case, you can see it wraps like a banana around the wrist. It's also quite thin and quite comfortable. Being as light and well-shaped as it is, I can recommend it for that 14 centimeter circumference hypothetical smaller male wrist. And of course, you've got all of the toys. The clasp itself is a system that allows you to incrementally adjust and this is great if you want to pull it all the way out over a dive suit or you just want to fine tune the sizing which you can do quite easily because it allows you to adjust while the watch is still on the wrist there's less danger of dropping it no danger really in a marine environment where you generally don't get your watch back there's both a trigger locking system and a clamshell so it's super sure tight when closed and then you have a grand seiko spring drive caliber inside the 9r65 three-day power reserve 15 seconds of accuracy per month note the lollipop like loomed counterweight of the seconds hand, an unusual use of a cathedral hand for the hours, power reserve indicator on the dial side so you know how close you are to dropping dead before the dive. You have the broad arrow minutes hand, and by the way, we're going to do a loom shot with this watch, but first let's hear the bezel. No one does a better job than Grand Seiko of reproducing Rolex's seemingly incompatible combination of mechanical ratchet and silky glide. It feels good, it sounds good. Now let's do that loom shot. As you can see, plenty of loom, and I love that lollipop counterweighted seconds hand. Every diver should have a loomed seconds hand. Let's stick with our dive theme here. We've got the Blancpain 50 Fathoms in titanium. As with the watch, as we just saw, it's a large piece, but it doesn't wear its 45 millimeters because of the titanium. This model came out in 2017, and I believe it represents the best of the 50 Fathoms line, as it doesn't have the garish and somewhat polarizing high polish of the standard steel model, and it combines that handsome satin gray case with a pleasing blue bezel and a matching metallic dial. Now, there was a previous flinke or highly fast and sculpted billowing rose lathe guilloche version of this watch that for me was just a little bit too florid for a diving timepiece. This does a good job of splitting the difference between that and the standard 5015. You get in a sailcloth strap. Note that it's held on with hex screws and bars, much more secure than spring bars. More expensive, but then Blancpain is not pinching pennies. There is rubber underneath the sailcloth so that aggressive textile material will not aggress against your skin. A simple 50 Fathoms branded titanium buckle. Let's hear the bezel. It's sharp, it's precise, 120 click, and note the cambered sapphire on its top. Blue bezel, blue dial, everything's loomed. Let's do that loom shot one more. Here you really get a sense of the 50 Fathoms advantage over a standard dive watch. With the sapphire cap protecting the bezel from scratches, the entire bezel itself can be loomed and exquisitely. Note this watch too features a loomed seconds hand. The movement. We need to talk about this movement. Caliber 1315, beautifully executed. It's always been a beautifully finished movement, but for the first decade or so of the 50 Fathoms 5015, you couldn't see it because of the solid case back and a soft iron cage to give it anti-magnetic qualities. Now that's achieved with a silicon hairspring. So you can see the three barrel, automatic winding, 120 hour power reserve movement that is adjusted in six, not the chronometer standard, of five positions. It is nicely made. You can see that the bevels are huge. The enclage is a mile wide. All screw heads are black polished. Train wheels and subsidiary wheels are satinated. There is a lovely brushed finish that drags a spiral satin sheen across the bridges. There is no cliched Cote de Genève here, and I think that works better in the dive watch. You can see that there is a double finished white gold nickel anthracite coated winding mass and of course the watch is 300 meters water resistant in my experience these caliber 1315 watches run to one second a day absolutely accurate to within and beyond chronometer standards and remember launched in 1953 just a few months before the rolex submariner this was the first modern format diver and it's a real piece of history i would even go so far as to say it's as historically important as the sub and it's better finished than its neighboring sports watch rival in Le brasu the royal oak offshore diver You may find that, like me, your tolerance for scratches, scuffs, and refinishing dulls with age, pun intended. 
if that's the case, this is the watch for you. Now you can see it is identically finished and identically powered and identically water resistant to the 1315 powered 300 meter 50 fathoms, but the Bathyscaph black ceramic is 43 millimeters with a 49 millimeter lug to lug span. Ceramic, if you're not familiar with the material, is very, very light. So this watch is easy to wear and comfortable because of the light weight and it is easy on the eyes because it remains, it's as sharp as the day it left the Valley du Jeu 20, 30, 40 years hence, because the ceramic is almost indelible, resisting scratches, scuffs, and dents. Now you may ask, is it fragile? Not unless you're that guy who perpetually shatters and chips sapphire crystals. If you are that guy, avoid this watch. Everyone else, this is a great way to avoid ever having to refinish a watch and to purchase a used watch that you know has never ever been refinished en route to you. Almost impervious to any marks, that is the Bathyscaph black ceramic. My favorite feature is the ceramic pin and ceramic buckle. That's where Hublot, for example, would use a PVD titanium piece that would get scratched. Here, it's as scratch resistant as the case itself. On the dressy side of the sports watch spectrum, that's right, you can have a sporty dress watch and a dressy sports watch. We have the Breguet Marine 5817 in steel, 39 millimeters and 100 meters water resistant. It has strong features. First, you'll note that the bars retaining the strap, which is fully conforming to the lug profile on the case band. Those bars are fixed by screws, so the construction is redoubtable. The dial itself is made of solid gold and then silvered after the process of cutting it. It is cut on a rose lay, then you can see guilloche main, or hand guilloche, guided by a guilloche, an artisan who just creates these pieces and guides the rose lay. You have the, the scooping of the date windows, as well as the hour track. Note, blued, fired blue, and applique Roman numerals. This is a loomed dial, the timepiece featuring a double-digit date with a quick set, and of course the dial made of solid gold and handcrafted is just the beginning. This watch is full of premium features. You'll appreciate the fact that the minder loops on the watch are made of steel. There's a lovely brigade deploying clasp. You can see that wave motif on the buckle. You can see it on the minder loops. You can see it in the crown guard structure. So this timepiece is remarkably consistent with design parallelism throughout. Turn all over and we have a handsome Breguet caliber 517 GG 65 hour power reserve it features the quick set for the date five position adjustment and it is based on a Frederic Piguet 1150 which is a high horology twin barrel movement it has a 288 beat rate so it is a modern movement with handsome hand finish that you would expect of Breguet and note the use of rose lathe guilloche once more with that wave motif cut into the winding mass. At 39 millimeters, this is a timepiece that's friendly for a smaller wrist, while the strong lug profiles and the conforming strap do add a little bit of virtual span across the wrist, it's quite easily accommodated, and even a small wrist is going to wear this one well. It is a thin watch, so though highly water resistant, nevertheless, this is one that will duck underneath the cuff and could easily be your surf turf watch. Whether you're falling off the yacht or racing it above the waves, this is the perfect option. Sticking with sports watches, albeit at a more accessible price point, we're going to stick with a little bit of precious metal refinement, yellow gold and steel with blue ceramic. This might be the most attractive version of the current two-tone Omega Seamaster Diver 300 meter. You're going to appreciate the fact that this 42 millimeter watch wears the same as the previous 41. Redesigned for 2018, the 25th anniversary of this remarkably enduring design, the timepiece gained pivoted end links, which make the 42 wear like the smaller 41. 13.7 millimeters thick, it wears lower than that, so it will fit underneath the cuff, and as you can see, even the helium escape valve and the winding crown have been cast in yellow gold. Let's take a look at the bracelet. There's some handsome detailing going on here. First, I'm gonna mention that the days of pin sleeves are long gone. You size this bracelet with screws. There's a half link in there for fine tuning, and you can see the intermediates are in yellow gold. There's a deploying clasp milled from the solid, and you're gonna appreciate that it's Secure as ever with twin trigger release and a handsome bevel along its side, but the new hotness for 2018 was the addition of a 9.6 millimeter push button incremental slider alongside the long renowned machined swing arm for the dive extension. So you have the fold out and you have the slider and you can do anything from fine tune the size to pull it all the way out over a multi-layered dry suit or wetsuit. Throw it on the wrist again one more time and you can see that across the wrist it's nicely compact and doesn't wear as thick as it is. The bezel of course is is probably the best ever fitted to a diver 300 meter, both for sound and for feel. Let's have a listen. 
It features a ceramic insert over a ceramic dial, so you can see zirconium oxide, blue ceramic, laser cut waves, yellow gold applique indices, and hands. This, of course, is the so-called Bond Seamaster with the skeleton hands and the general look made famous by Pierce Brosnan during his turn as 007. Inside the case, you've got a master chronometer movement. So. Meeting the COSC standards, but going above and beyond, this watch is also amagnetic. 55-hour power reserve, direct and indirect impulse, coaxial escapement as invented by George Daniels. All of this 300 meters water resistant with a quick set and hacking seconds. And you've got the helium escape valve. If you are that saturation diver, you know what to do with this. Everyone else, all you need to know is that James Bond once used his as a remote detonation mine. This timepiece offers everything you could want. It's your dress watch. It's your sports watch. It's your Bond memorabilia. This timepiece absolutely rocks. And it's a variation of a watch I own as I owned the original Bond and still do. Okay, heavy hitters in the sports watch world. This is brand new for 2020. The new Line Sport Santograph Sport from FP Journe. 44 millimeters in platinum. You can see the major change here is that you asked, FP Journe answered, and we have no rubber bumpers. Look at all of the surfaces previously covered by black rubber. All of them are now polished platinum. That's trading up. Now the watch is 44 millimeters, but at about 11 millimeters thick, it's super slim, and it wears easily even on a small wrist. I mentioned that all of the formerly rubberized surfaces now are platinum. You can see you get that same high-grade frosted platinum finish, and the lovely purplish blue mauve dial that were introduced on the platinum version of the Mono Pusher Retro Pump back in 2018. So this is a watch that's adapting a successful formula, the previous Santograph Sport with the case profile of the Mono Pusher with the no rubber look for which FP Journe collectors pined. Now throwing it on the wrist, you can see it is a full double deployment clasp, very comfortable, but massive. You can see this watch all in platinum, gives you plenty of that wonder metal with a black polished steel bezel surrounding the tachymeter scales of the 1 second, 20 second, and 10 minute registers on the dial. There are two patents in this watch, one for the rocker system, I guess I'm going to have to wind this one a bit more, but one for the rocker system and one for the system by which the barrel drives the chronograph off of the arbor or the axle of the barrel and that is the second patent. You have one for the mono pusher that allows you to start and stop with a mono pusher layout. Most mono pushers cannot restart after stopping. And then you've got the barrel, whose arbor drives the chronograph and whose toothed edge drives the time telling functions. When I mention this watch is massive, this is one of the reasons. The caliber is immense, an 18 karat rose gold for bridges and plates. It's almost like holding a minted gold dollar in your hand. When you hold the movement blank for this watch, pre-machining at FP Journe, it's massive just as a movement blank. And of course, you've got the Foudreon, one one hundredth of a second. You've got the 20 second register, and you've got the 10 minute register. The watch is an 80 hour power reserve chronograph off, 24 hour power reserve chronograph on, and the purpose for driving the chronograph off the arbor and the time off the barrel is that you have no loss of amplitude when you start the chronograph, only the JLC Duomet can make that boast. You'll also appreciate that the watch features the ability to gauge speeds of objects between the start and stop of a fixed course, such as a standing mile or kilometer, and you can gauge the speed between 36,000 units and 6 units, depending on which scale and which tachymeter you employ. Resetting it is also a wonderful piece of horological theater, by the way, the bezel also has a ceramic insert in that same blue mauve. But if that's not sportier for you, I can one-up that Santograph Sport with this Santograph Sport. Full titanium, 44 millimeters, bright yellow lacquered dial, and you can see there's a lovely frosted bezel surrounding the smoked sapphires of the individual registers. Here we have the Line Sport Santograph Sport in titanium, yellow dial, and you can see the second escapement that regulates the 1 100th of a second foutreon. Because there are no tachymeters here, you can see the underlying mechanism that governs the operation of the watch. Now, one reason you would buy this watch over the other is because it's light. The other reason is because it's loomed. And if you look very carefully, you can see that the numerals themselves are solid three-dimensional blocks of Luminova that are placed directly onto the dial and then surrounded with bl black lacquered borders. So they stand out during the day and they also pop at night. Let's do a loom shot.
It's truly impressive, it looks great, and it really brings out the character of those radially arrayed numerals with differential size to fit around the individual features and geography of the dial. Now when you flip this one over, it's the same basic movement, but because lightness is the theme here, the movement is made of aluminum bridges and plates. So titanium watch, titanium bracelet, and aluminum bridges and plates. An absolute wonder watch. Mechanically, it is identical to the platinum timepiece we just saw. Now this is effectively the blood rival of the F.P. Journe Santograph in all its forms, the Gégère Lecoultre Duomet Iconograph, a timepiece, 42 millimeters in platinum, rarely made, rarely seen, with an exquisite ruthenium-coated frosted dial. This is a watch that features two separate movements in one case. As you take a look at the case back, you can see that the Caliber 380 has two separate barrels, one for the chronograph, one for the time. When you start the chronograph, you double the power supply by activating that second barrel. With a barrel for time and a barrel for the chronograph, not only does the balance not lose amplitude when you start the chronograph, but Unlike the FP Journe, the watch also doesn't lose power reserve because you're not just creating a second drivetrain to operate the complication, you're supplying a second co-equal power source to keep the amplitude up. Now you'll see there is a mono pusher chronograph with a column wheel, it has four crenellated towers, a free sprung balance, it beats away at 21.6, it features an explosive Cote de Soleil that radiates out across the German silver bridges. Maichot is what we call them in the French-speaking watch reasons, it, it's the same nickel, copper, and zinc alloy. And again, because we are in the French-speaking watch regions, we're gonna call it Maichot, but it is German silver, the same as you would find on a longer movement. You'll also note the depth of this movement. You can almost look through it diagonally with beveled edges, blued screws, blackened screws, satinated wheels, and of course that sunburst radiating out from the balance. Everything about this movement, which winds from a single crown, is impressive. Now you have a flying second on the dial side. You have center seconds for both the chronograph as well as the time telling. And I waited until they were diagonally opposed to start the chronograph, but you can see when I stop the chronograph, the center seconds for the time continues to advance, and the chronograph allows you to read the hours, the tens of minutes, the single digit minutes on the disc, and of course the seconds and the sixths of seconds. Two power reserve indicators. The watch features a full deploying clasp, an impressively handmade case, double finished on its side, polish and satin with welded lug profile. The watch is about 13 and a half millimeters thick, which means it's thin enough to fit under a cuff. And you can see on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist, it fits and well, it better, because I owned the dimensionally identical white gold version of this watch for four years and I loved it. it was my most accurate mechanical watch ever, able to keep plus one second a day whether I ran the chronograph or not. JLC, promise kept. Now let's discuss the softer side of Rolex, a side we rarely see. This, of course, is the Cellini Date, 39 millimeters in white gold. The standout feature of this watch is the 45 millimeter lug to lug span. That gives this watch the ability to work on a wrist as small as 13 centimeters circumference, and I rarely say that for a man-sized watch. With an explosive blue guilloche dial with a sunken track for seconds and minutes, it's a gorgeous watch with a date radial indicated at three o'clock on the dial that has its own sub-register guilloche internally. Now the alpha hands in white gold are beautiful, delicate, and in my opinion far superior to the heavier triangular Dauphine style hands. Because the watch is thin at 12.6 millimeters, it fits easily underneath a cuff, and it's rare to ever see a Rolex of the modern era on a factory strap with a factory pin buckle, but that's exactly what this is. Now the watch is a chronometer, the watch is 48 hour power reserved with the same balance bridge and free sprung architecture as a sub. So it's still a very tough movement and a very accurate movement. Of course, the timepiece is a dress watch rarely seen in the Rolex catalog, not that for which they are known, but that just means you're gonna have the Rolex that no one else does. And among the Cellini line, it's a poorly kept secret that the one to get is white gold Cellini date blue guilloche dial, and that is exactly what we have right here in 39 millimeters. This is an extraordinary watch with a domed bezel profile and a very fine coining. It's not the fluting of a gold bezel on a date just. It's more like a coining on the edge of a quarter, a watch that is all about subtle charms and again, highly uncommon. It gives you that Rolex pedigree, refinement, and of course, durability, as this is a timepiece that can go solidly five years, even 
10 years between servicing. I once saw Rolex slip a PDF document about that. I have never been able to reproduce that document, but it had factory masthead on it, and I think that's the worst kept secret in the Rolex world, 10 year service intervals using current lubricants and servicing methods, as well as the assembly tolerances of the parts themselves. Those also play a role. Now, if you want a better known dress watch family than Cellini, well, there aren't too many because Rolex blankets the market with ads, but connoisseurs know the IWC Portuguese was not just one of the first modern dress style wristwatches and certainly the longest in continuous production by any brand, but it was also the first oversized wristwatch created as such. Back in 1939 with the caliber 325, the Portuguese importers of IWC wanted a wristwatch as accurate as a pocket watch, which involved putting a pocket watch movement in a wristwatch, because at the time wristwatch movements were not as accurate as pocket watch movements. And what you have right here is the 5102 Jubilee. It is the Portuguese hand wind with a 12-step hand-finished white lacquer dial designed to evoke the original enamel used on the F.A. Jones era 1860s, 70s, and 80s IWC pocket watches. You've got a dial that is handmade. You've got a case that is beautifully rendered in stainless steel. 43.2 millimeters, like the original, it's an oversized dress watch and a beautiful one, created in the same era as the Patek Calatrava. They, say, they share the same no-nonsense form-follows-function design ethic, particularly as regards the leaf hands, the small seconds, and the integration of the lugs into the case band. Now, the dial is something else, as you can see the date is in the middle of turning over so all oh, my poor nails they're not what they used to be I'm gonna help it along and as you can see all the modern features of present and correct stop seconds quick set date turn it all over and you've got a hidden complication you've also got a little bit of precious metal adjusted to a chronometer style five positions this caliber right here the 59215 is based on the 50,000 series automatic but the power reserve on the reverse side says this one is good for eight days manual wind to the seven days of the automatic free sprung balance overcoil hairspring made by hand a very accurate watch a very beautiful movement and as with the original portuguese we have a movement that is pocket watch sized filling the case back in its entirety and this watch is a limited edition out of 1000 all of them sold out and you can see why this one is elemental this one is visceral if you're going to buy just one iwc you're going to get yourself a mark series pilot a big pilot or a portuguese and this is a great one to get historically significant i think it'll be remembered alongside the jubilee from 1993 the five 441 and you get an Italian made Santoni leather strap of outstanding quality. It's a flat watch too as you can see it fits flush on the wrist it has no trouble sliding beneath the cuff and that's always the mark of a great dress watch. Then again the mark of a great dress watch is on the dial of this one. This is the Longomatic Perpetual, 38.5 millimeters in red gold from a long Unzona. Yes, the case is gold. Yes, the dial is sterling silver. Yes, the moon phase disc is made of solid gold, and it is a perpetual calendar with a wonderful zero reset hacking second system so you can set the watch precisely. It's loomed, I get all that, but the standout here is the factory bracelet, rarely seen. This model was made from 2007 to 2012, and as you can see, the bracelet itself is remarkably individual, original, and it almost has the air of a cut gem as there are so many facets, curves, nips, tucks, peaks and troughs inside this bracelet. The light strikes it almost the way light radiates from a flame. It is flame surfacing. Now turn it all over and you have the caliber 922. Note the use of double precious metal for the winding mass. 21 karat hallmarked gold for the rotor, platinum for the mass, and they're held together by blued screws. You've got that zero reset second system. And of course, you've got all the standards of high horology, East German watch finishing that I demonstrated on the date just. You've just got the convenience of automatic winding and a perpetual calendar that need not be reset until the year 2100. Throw it on the wrist, it's thin, it's comfortable, it's about 47 millimeters across the wrist and at 38.5 millimeters anyone can wear this double red gold perpetual calendar. Gold bracelet, gold case, and a rare example of a longer complication on a full factory band.
All right, you want a watch that splits the difference between a sports watch and a dress watch? The recurring theme, the tension of this episode between dress watches and sports watches and where each one sits on a spectrum, nothing better expresses that dichotomy of dress and sports than a Rolex Datejust Turnograph. This example features a sensational gold champagne sunburst dial in immaculate condition, as well as a white gold turnograph bezel. This is the 16264 X series Datejust Turnograph, better known as the Rolex Thunderbird. Originally launched as the reference 6202 in the early 1950s, it was the first series production Rolex rotating bezel sports watch. Of course, there was the Zero Graph before, but only a few dozen of those were made in all of its forms. This watch became important as it was the progenitor of an entire generation of rotating bezel Rolex sports watches that came out in the 50s, followed shortly thereafter by the Sub. By the late 50s, the Turnograph became part of the Datejust family, which it remained until it was discontinued in 2010. Now, the model you see right here is in outstanding condition with full lugs, full bezel, a jubilee in outstanding condition. It's truly an unusual combination. The watch nicknamed the Thunderbird because the original turnograph was issued to the U.S. Air Force Thunderbirds Aerobatic Demonstration Squadron. And of course, as service issue, the timepiece took on the folklore mystique of a service-issued military watch. So while you may not think of a quasi dress watch as military issue, that is the heritage of the Datejust Turnograph. And of course, you still have that rotating bezel here in white gold. You have white gold indices and white gold hands on an original factory tritium dial with that spectacular golden sunburst. It's somewhere between apple cider and champagne, and it's absolutely bewitching. The watch is 100 meters water resistant, and of course, it is a chronometer, so it's both very accurate and very tough. Throw it on the wrist one more time, 36 millimeters. It fits comfortably on any wrist. You could wear it on a wrist as small as 13 centimeters circumference. A Rolex sports watch with real history, and not a single person in your office, or your club, or your social circles, will have this timepiece. Even if they all own Rolex watches, this is the one that will be exclusive to you. And that's the best of both worlds. Rolex quality, heritage, Rolex precision, but with the one nobody's got. Individuality and commonality, all at the same time. The best of both. If this is the penultimate watch, how do we finish the show? That's the question, and a valid one. But Jager LeCoultre, in 2014, launched a watch that was four years in the making. The Master Compressor Extreme Lab 2 was a 46.8 millimeter ceramic and titanium multi-complication that included a shocking amount of original content. Now, the watch is entirely shock resistant. Inside, there is a shock absorber system that isolates the movement from the case. There's also a full balance bridge with a free sprung index. The watch features a quick release strap system that allows you to easily remove the strap. This strap is rubber. It also has one in leather. The quick release system allows you to make that quick switch. The buckle itself is the most elaborate I've ever encountered. A double Ardeon with a quick release system that releases the buckle from the strap. It also features a long short incremental adjustment system so you have a micro adjust that is built into the strap. The movement Caliber 780 has 70 joules and 569 parts. The chronograph features a digital display up to 60 minutes. That is a digital display up to 60 minutes, which is extraordinary because most chronographs only have a 30 minute display. Well, this one also has a 24 hour chronograph register. So not only does it have chronograph hours, but it goes up to 24 hours. These are two features by duration alone, scarcely seen on chronographs. Add the digital nature of the chronograph, and this watch is above and beyond. Now you'll also note there is a GMT function whereby a stub hour hand is separated from the local hours, and you'll also appreciate that we have a 24 hour register down at six o'clock that allows you to have AM PM distinction for that stub GMT hand. And if you don't need the second time zone, you can hide it under the local hours. The watch has two column wheels, one for the chronograph, one for the multifunction crown that allows you to set the watch, wind the watch and set the GMT, just like a high-end Richard Mille. The timepiece features an open dial with a nickel anthracite 
coding and floating individual numerals. It is brightly loomed and there's a radial power reserve across the top of the dial that transitions from blue to white as you wind it. In fact, I'm going to do a loom shot so you can see the loomed power reserve on this watch. And hopefully my camera focus will cooperate with me here. It doesn't always, but you can see that the upper arc at the top of the dial has been loomed. This is an extraordinary timepiece. We're going to bring the light back, and I'm going to refit the strap to the case. My nails, unfortunately, don't allow me to do this as easily as you will, but you'll also note it's pretty much a cinch to do, as the timepiece is designed for easy assembly and disassembly. Listen to this ratcheting articulated lugs. And check this out, on the side of the watch, there is a hacking second system that allows you to hack the watch in spite of the fact that the crown does not pull out. So you can see I've unhacked the watch using the hacking lever, one of many features on this timepiece, and I'm gonna throw it on my wrist, 16 centimeters in circumference. This model is shock resistant, it's loomed, it's multifunction, it's 100 meters water resistant, so you better believe you can wear it in the water. And as you can see, here comes the digital jump of the chrono, it is an absolute festival of features on your wrist. This one will win your heart, and it's a timepiece that, if it said Richard Mille on the dial, wouldn't cost in the low $30,000 range. It would cost close to a million bucks, and there would be celebrities, F1 cars, all manner of useless paraphernalia at the launch. JLC gives you the horology without the hype, and that's what this watch is. You have a small wrist, not a problem. This watch will fit. But if I were to take just watch from one watch from this show, it would be this guy right here. The IWC Tribute to Paul Weber. Reference 5503, 45 millimeters, with a Portofino-style wire lug case and a lovely 12-step hand-laid blue lacquer dial, jump hours, jump minutes, hacking seconds, 60-hour power reserve, and a 500-piece limited edition. These watches sold out instantly. When we were a Richemont dealer of IWC back in 2018 for the 150th anniversary of the company, we got one of these. They were gone in a second. Globally, these sold out so fast, I didn't get to videotape one for the channel until a pre-owned example came in. This is the second pre-owned example we've had, and that's since 2018. The movement is a masterpiece. Caliber 94200, two mainspring barrels coupled together, and because the second system is driven by a different train than the minutes, there is a Paul-based coupling system at the center that allows the minute to jump as the seconds hand passes the index up at 60. It's also an absolute ball to play with the movement as you can quickly and easily adjust it forward and backwards using the quick set. Note that the movement is properly sized for the case and as with the 50,000 series in the Portuguese hand wind, it is a special piece built for the 150th anniversary. There is a rose gold medallion in there properly sized for a giant case with a free sprung balance. You can see the handmade brigade overcoil, a 60 hour power reserve putting what was then the 36 hour power reserve of the Zeitwerk to shame. This watch is probably my favorite IWC, rivaled only by the 3770 Grand Complication. Throw it on the wrist, this thing is an absolute party on four lugs. My favorite watch in this show, and if I could beg you to give one watch a warm home, even as good as those JLCs are, this would be the one. Remember, we don't just sell watches. We buy watches, and we're in a buying mood right now, paying our best prices since we became Watchbox in 2017. Sell us a watch. Buy a watch. Remember to reach out directly to Team Also at thewatchbox.com. All watches, prices, and references are in the description below. Time out, Tim out, and thanks for logging on.